Hi everyone, thank you for watching this video. Um, before I get started, I did transcribe my arrangement of this song and I uploaded that to Patreon, I think last week or two weeks ago. So if you go back, find that, download the PDF, print it out so that you can actually have the sheet music in front of you while I'm going through this. Uh, this is not a tutorial to just teach you this by ear. This is assuming that you are looking at the sheet music and I would really encourage you to have a pencil um, out on your stand so that you can actually mark in the fingerings as I go. Um, you don't have to follow uh, the fingerings that I choose. You don't have to choose the bowings that I did. That's all up to you and, and your own way of interpreting this song or this arrangement. So do whatever you like. Um, but that is that is the goal for this tutorial. I'm going to be giving you a couple um, musical things to watch out for. Uh, and yeah, that, that's pretty much the goal of this tutorial. So this intro bit here for the first seven measures, uh, you don't even need to have it. It's just something that I improvised before I started singing. Um, but if you want to play it, it's in 3-4. The key of this piece is G major, so you have one sharp, which is F sharp. Um, the rhythm is very, very free and flowing. This first bit is in 3-4, and the rest of the, the song is in 6-8, but that's a very loose 6-8, so forgive me if I completely change uh, rhythms here and there, because I'm just going to do what I feel in the moment. Um, okay, so first measure, we are in first position. I'm assuming that all of you already know your positions. I'm not going to give you the fingerings for, for first position because I think that that should be self-explanatory. So all of this pretty basic. What I will say about the, the very beginning of this is that, um, whenever you're starting a piece, especially, especially if it's delicate, uh, you want to make sure that you vibrate before you actually start playing. I don't remember if I did that in my YouTube video. I hope I did. I probably didn't, but you should. So vibrate and then start. So get it activated. And another, uh, tip for starting a piece that's delicate is to breathe in and um, start on the exhale. So now let's combine those two things. Breathe in, start your vibrato. And it gives you this already present sound. Uh, you're ready to go and it's just, it's a cleaner start um, than what you'll hear some beginners do. So four, one, four, hold this a little longer, then start. Now here we go into fourth position. So if you don't know, fourth position is where the, the crook of the neck is here. You put your thumb, one goes directly across from that. So if you were on the A string, one would be on E. Um, we are in fourth position, but we're playing third finger. So that's F sharp. You have a crescendo through the next measure. Then you have this run. Which I put into one entire bow. Um, so just make sure that you save your bow, especially on that first dotted eighth there. So you start that run in fourth position, you quickly shift back into first, and then at the end of it, you shift up again into fourth position, finger three. The next two measures, that is in fourth position still, three, one, you have a fermata over that A, and you also have a decrescendo. And you can pause for as long as you like here. And this is where the song actually starts. Okay, now we're going to be going into a different position. So we replace finger three with finger four. And our hand is extended. So now we are in extended third position. Okay, so four on B. Yeah, just extended. Hold me close. And then this is measure nine now. So we're gonna make a little shift backwards where one, instead of being on G, is now on F sharp. Two is on G, now we shift up into fourth position. So let's do measure nine again. So here's two, oh sorry, this is one. Shift back one, two, 
one, three. So from the beginning of the song. All right, moving on to measure 10. We have three. And here, um, you may not like what I did here. I played an open, which I don't know. I don't think it's a problem. So three, open. And the reason why I chose to play open here is so that I have time to move my hand and drop one down on that B. So B, open D, B. And it is quite challenging to get right because it feels like you're just dropping down your finger on B out of nowhere. So it may take a couple tries um, just to get that consistent each time. And the reason why I have one on B here is because that now sets me up for measure 11 and the pickup into measure 11, which is all in this same position here, which is um, second position. So one, three, one, three, four, one. Uh, so down bow, up. If that makes sense. Okay. Now moving on to measure 12. We're coming out of measure 11 where finger one is on that B. So now going into measure 12, we're gonna shift up with one again. One, one, three. Whenever you're outlining a chord, which this is, um, this is actually pretty much, yeah, this is like the, the hand shape and the fingering that you go with. So one, one, three. If it's minor, it's one, one, two. I'll show you. That's a minor chord. That's major. And that's the chord that we just outlined here. So one, one, three. All right, we finished that. This is the last note of measure 12. One, one, three. Now back to first posi position, finger three. that is in first position. I don't think that you'll have any trouble with it. All right, so uh, measures 14 and 15, there's a crescendo through that. You're still in first position. Now in measure 16, you're going into fourth briefly, then harmonic. So if you don't know where your harmonic is, um, here's G, here's A, and you don't push your finger all the way down. You just lightly rest third finger on top of the string and it gives you this really beautiful airy sound. So, and then we come back. I will say that's not the most graceful fingering. Coming back. I think that would be better. That's not what I did before, but I think it makes more sense. So if you want, after the harmonic, coming back, I would put four on E, two on D, and this is all extended, right? And then one on C natural. Uh, measure 17. Open, one, three. Now shifting up into fourth position, one, four. What did I decide to do here? Yeah, um, probably the easiest solution would just be, so open one, three, one, four, three, one, three, and then first position. As you can tell, I don't really shy away from using open strings, at least in this. Mostly, mostly because whenever you're singing and playing at the same time, it's just really, really helpful to, to have those open strings interjected every once in a while. So you check your intonation, just like have that as a foundation. I don't know if that's cheating or not, but. So this is measure 21, one, back up into fourth position, three, four, one, harmonic, 
C natural for, here's a decrescendo. So um, moving on to measure 24, it's exactly like measure eight. It's exactly what we just went over. Let me see if there are any changes. Right, so it changes uh, measure 28. If you look back at measure 13 and compare measure 13 with measure 29, sorry, measure 13 and measure 29, Here's a measure um, 13, where you stay in first position. Uh, here is measure 29, where it goes up into fourth position. And you have a crescendo into the next part. So you have, I believe, all of the information you need for the very beginning of the song up until, um, let's see, measure 31 now. This goes into the section, um, and when you speak, angels sing from above. So for, and when you speak, angels sing from above. It's very del- oh, I have forte written. Well, I think forte was more for the voice. And when you speak, angels sing from above. I still think the cello part should be um, delicate, maybe with a faster vibrato slightly. And when you speak, angels sing from above. Um, so four and three in fourth position, and then you go over third finger and fourth position on the G string. Every day words seem to turn into love songs. So four, three, three across, fade out, one. Um, and then if you don't know what this is, so... Um, at the end of measure 37 and at the end of measure 39, you'll see these two slashes. Those are called Cicera's, Cicera's, um, and they basically just indicate taking a break or a pause. Um, again, up for interpretation. I just added them because I, I like giving silence uh, some recognition. I think it makes the piece kind of uh, come alive. Uh, moving on to measure 40. Measure 40, again, starts exactly how the other two verses started, where you are in extended third position, 4, 2, 1. Stays the same up until, uh, let's see, about measure 45, 45. And this is where we start transitioning into the cello instrumental section in the middle. Okay, so now we're going into instrumental section. That was the best way I could figure how to turn the melody into like getting back into that main melody. I think it works. So let's see, measure. 46, measure 46, starts on an up bow. This is, uh, uh, um, so this is up bow. So if you'll notice what I'm doing it may look intimidating on the page to see two notes being played at the same time. It's really not. Um, all it is is an open G drone, at least in this first part. So open G against that four. Make sure that the intonation is really tight. So they need to be perfectly in tune with each other or else it's going to be very obvious. Like this sounds horrible. So make sure your tuning is just right. So hold that open G through the change. Now 
Now this is measure 50. This is a little bit harder because we're not doing a double stop with an open string. We're doing it with two fingered notes. So four on D and three on F sharp. It helps to vibrate these for sure to kind of warm them up. Now this is measure 51. No double stops in this one. You are in extended position. So two on B, extend four for that F sharp, back two on that F sharp. Now we're back in first position. Again, we have two fingered notes. So it's one and two, E and C natural. Now open D, this doesn't have any double stops. It does have a reach back and extended one backwards for that G sharp. Then one again, A, three. So this measure is on an up bow if you wanna mark that in. Four, extend one, shift up one, three, C, G sharp, A, F sharp. Now here's some more double stops. So C against finger one E. Like that. And let me just interject this here. A great way to practice double stops is to play the bottom note, play the top, oh, sorry, no vibrato, play the bottom note, no vibrato, play the top note, no vibrato, then play together. And just go through each of the following ones like that. So the next one would be four, open, together. All right, so this is measure 54. So four stays down, but one goes to open. Then we go back in the next measure to one, while still holding finger four. And then we change to one and three. So one on the G string, three on the D string. Now we're gonna take up, we're gonna take advantage of this crescendo to shift into the next double stop. So here's crescendo. That could have been cleaner. So this is measure 56 now. Um, the double stop is two on G string. So we're playing C here. And then four on the D string and we're playing A. And just mess around with it until it completely locks in place. That'll work for now. And then two on G, back into first position for measure uh, 57. All of this is pretty straightforward. Now we're going back to the same double stop, one on E, four on C. Open D, straightforward, we're, we're doing this again, reaching back for that G sharp. Here's an easy double stop. One and open G. Now, super easy, open G and open D. Back to one. So if you'll notice this melody right here, is just being played against an open G. We are at measure 66, three on F sharp, four on D. Pretty much everything we just went over, one on E, two on C. Okay, so I've already talked about extending backwards, one for that G sharp. So here's one, one, but now we're adding Four. All right, so measure 70, um, it is, uh, the first note of that is held over by a tie 
from the previous measure, and that is an up bow. So here's your, your uh, octave double stop, op uh, sorry, not octave, one on A, four on G. Now separate bow E. Here are the last four notes of measure 70. E, three, four, one. I shift up to fourth position on that last note there on A, just because I wanna be able to vibrate it. Okay, so uh, measure 71, that quadruple stop, it looks scary, it's really not though. The bottom two notes are open strings and the top note is your open A. So literally the only thing you have to worry about with your left hand is playing that E finger one. Um, so let me play. Those are your top two notes, here are your bottom two notes. And the way that you play this is you play two and two. So two on the bottom, halfway through your bow, flip over, and play the top two. This next quadruple stop in measure 72, the only thing that changes is finger one. Instead of being here on E, you're scooting it back to being on D sharp. Um, this next triple stop in measure 73 is three on your G string, first position, B, open D, and then open A. Same thing. Uh, measure 77, uh, this changes. This one's a little harder. So the bottom two notes, you have one, first position on your C string, which is D. So one, four, three, open A. Good news, you made it through the hardest part. Now we are back to measure 77, which is the same as measure eight, and all of the other uh, beginnings of the verses. So again, extended third position, four, two, one. Scoop back, one, two, shift up, one, three, open, one, Three, one, three, four, one. Now you're outlining a chord, one, one, three. Now we go into fourth position for a really soft ending. Four, one, three, one. Back to first. And here's the last chord. I think I probably could have transcribed this better, but it gets the point across. So open, open, three. So open G and open D together. Open D and open A together. Now keep D going and just put down three in fourth position. And then um, this next part, I really, uh, the program I was working with didn't allow um, a great way to notate a left hand pizzicato while you're still holding something, so. A left hand pizzicato just literally means taking your left hand and plucking that last note, which is an open G, so. And there you go, that's the end. I hope I didn't go too quickly. The main thing is that you have all of the fingerings that you need to, you know, even if you choose not to use them, you'll know what I used and you can kind of use them as a frame, framework to decide your own. And the bowings, they are in the sheet music. So that's why I didn't talk about them in this video. Go back and, and look at the sheet music. Um, hopefully I explained um, the quadruple stops all right and the double stops. Um, I think everything else is uh, self self explanatory, but if you have any questions or any technique that's in this that I didn't talk about, um, let me know in the comment section. If I can help in any way, I will do my best. So thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoy uh, learning along with this tutorial.